Margaret Thomas, please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Margie Thomas, and I am one of the leaders of our high school youth group here at St. James. This week, four of our students traveled to Asheville, North Carolina, alongside students from St. Paul's Episcopal Hanover and Christ Church Alexandria. We stayed at First Presbyterian downtown and worked with a dozen or so nonprofits throughout the week. You'll hear a little bit about each of these organizations from our students this morning. And you might also hear about Flat Jesus and uh, we have virtual Flat Jesus made many photo cameos. Please follow St. James on Facebook. Um, but I'll tee it up with my takeaway. On Wednesday evening, we were joined by TJ Amos, who shared her story from success to poverty nearly overnight. While we don't have time to recount her journey in full, I'll share what TJ left us with, a broken seashell. The shell was her reminder that the brokenness reveals the beauty inside us all. This week, we met a lot of broken people. The highlight was seeing these young people share their faith and grace with those who needed it most. With that, Rodman Shook. Good morning. Good morning. If any of you do not know, my name is Rodman Shook. I am a rising senior at Faulkner High School, and this was my third mission trip. Now, everyone, if you were to ask them, oh, should I go on a mission trip? Um, everyone would say yes. But if you go from past years, you would know you would go, you would work at a house, you would build a house, or you would repair it in any way, shape, or form. This year, obviously, was different. We weren't in the role, we were in a city, and we were working with nonprofits, as Margie said. Now, it was a big difference, obviously. We were with a small group, just the four of us, and then we joined three others from Hanover and then four from Alexandria. And we all had, there was three groups made up of all of us. We had these snow leopards, the dragons, and then the roosters in which all are represented here. Um, and we all split up every day. And my group, I was a snow leopard, we went to the Hayward Church in Asheville. And this church, it helped out um, homeless people. It gave them a meal every day. And this meal, it wasn't like you go into a line and they put food on the plate, you sat down and then the service would bring food to you. And it was a cool experience seeing everyone and getting to talk to people that you would never know. And then they have a church, of course, like this, but instead of a pastor talking the whole time, uh, it was like pastor would say a question and then the church itself could answer that question. And then he would talk about it instead of saying, thank you for bringing that up, which I thought was an interesting experience. Um, after that, the next day, we went to this place called the Steadfast House. Now, this house was for women and children who were in a difficult situation. So domestic violence, uh, just homelessness in general. And this place, you could stay here. There was... 50 rooms, if I remember correctly. You could stay here for two years maximum and to get yourself back up on your feet. And we spread mulch around on a nice trail at the Sedfast House. And one of the workers who worked there, he said, this means everything to these people because they would see you and then they would ask their supervisors or their helpers why these kids came. And he said the answer, was because they choose to and they felt like it was the best. Oh, that was my explanation, not his. Um, but that was really cool to do, especially since uh, Chris working got the great idea to use a trash can as a mulch moving thing. Good for you. Um, 
And then, of course, lastly, we have Flat Jesus. Now, this was a, I will say it, Selden Walker. He brought this to the first day, and we got into the van just in the parking lot, and he was like, I have this uh, little thing called Flat Jesus, and we were like, okay, this is interesting. Um, he's fully clothed. That's not normal. Um, so he made cameos, as Margie said, in a lot of pictures, and especially um, on the way down, he was up in like the dashboard watching us the whole way down, which was interesting. But uh, yeah, this was a great trip, a lot different than last year, and I hope to do it next year too. Thank you. My name is Andrew Updike. I'm a rising junior, and this was my second mission trip. So as you've heard from Rodman, uh, this was a different trip than what we're used to. Usually, instead of working on houses, we were working on building relationships with other people who are less fortunate than us. In past years, we had met and talked with the owners of houses that we were working on. This were, these, those relationships were special and gave us something to think about. But this year, we met hundreds of people who are living through homelessness and food insecurity. These people that we met and talked to were some of the nicest and joyful people that I've met. One of the places we visited was called Church of the Advocate, which was a church that was mainly for the homeless, but was open to everyone. And uh, we actually talked and discussed about today's gospel. After the discussion, we were invited to have brunch with them. And we met and talked to people such as Chris, who has traveled across the country, and he told us his stories, and we also met Frank, and we discussed about our Women's World Cup team and their run in the tournament. Uh, this year was different, but in a good way. It gave us all new perspectives on life and how lucky we are, and for that, I am forever grateful. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Luke, and I also just finished my junior year, and this is my third trip, uh, third mission trip with the youth group. And first off, I just want to thank everyone in the congregation for all of your help and support through prayers and contributions for our trip, and to Chris, Margie, and Ryan for all of their help in making this trip possible. As everyone else has mentioned, this year's trip was very different from our previous ones to South Carolina. Rather than building houses this year, we focused on building relationships with the people that we were helping. When we worked in South Carolina, the only people that we were really able to get to know were the residents of the couple houses that we worked on or were fixing. This year, however, we were able to meet a much wider variety of people as we worked two shifts per day, each in a different area of Asheville. So we got to know a, whole, a large number of people from the homeless community in Asheville. All the groups that we worked for were community oriented and focused not only on helping people who are experiencing homelessness, but also building a community where everyone supports each other. The groups we helped included the Body and Soul Food Bank, which took still edible food that was being sent to the dump by supermarkets after it was deemed not good looking for sale, and giving it out to the community, while also educating them about what the food does for their body and how they can make best use of their nu nutrients. We also helped out at the Hayward Street Church, which Rodman mentioned, which was a group that provided many resources for people experiencing homelessness, such as several meals per week and a special place for people who had just gotten out of the hospital and didn't have a home to stay in while they recovered. I had a great year. I had a great time this year, thanks to support from the, the congregation, and I'm looking forward to another great trip next year. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Chris Working. I'm one of the uh, adult youth leaders for our mission trip. Um, I've done this for a little over a decade now, and. Uh, I didn't, I didn't let Father uh, Randolph know that I'd be speaking this morning. It kind of came to me this morning after I'd heard the youth speak at the 8 a.m. service. Um, so this trip was different. It was very different. Um, the goals of our trip are always to reach out to the communities that were there to serve, to build the relationships with others. Um, and just thank you all very much for supporting the youth, supporting our uh, our youth group and financially and in your prayers for allowing us to go on these trips with everybody. It just, it, it's life changing, um, both for the adults and the students. And I just kind of wanted to share my perspective from, from the adult side. 
Um, one of the places we went to, which Rodman had mentioned, was a women's shelter. Um, well, actually, let me, let me jump back for one second. Um, in the past, our mission trips have been uh, focused on uh, helping the poor, the working poor. Um, we've gone and worked on homes that have no floors, where you can see the dirt through them, the trailers, the roofs are leaking. We go to homes where these people are in places that you and I would consider uninhabitable, very sad. This trip was even different than that. Uh, we were working with people that were homeless, which is a totally different category of our community that I had not been exposed to firsthand. Um, Rodman had mentioned we went to a women's shelter. This is a place where women could go that were being beaten and battered by their others that could take their children so they were safe. Um, you know, th this was a community where uh, veterans, women veterans could go, mentally ill folks could go to recover. People coming out of a hospital that didn't have family and friends to take care of them could go and stay. We were doing mulching for them. And uh, it was hotter than can be out there. And um, I noticed a, a woman came out, and she was probably in her early 30s. And she, uh, she laid out in the sun, kind of on the pavement. And uh, she was just trying to get some sun. And I'm, I looked at her, and I jokingly said, man, you picked about the hottest day in the world to come out and lay in the sun. You've got to be crazy. And she just looked at me and smiled and said, I've been locked up way too long. I'll take all the sun I can get. And that's when I noticed the two anklets she had. She was under house arrest. And that's her. I'm complaining about the heat. She wanted nothing more than to see the daylight and be in it. Um, another place we went was the Hayward Street Church. Um, this church in Asheville uh, is not a beautiful church physically like ours. It is, is a small brick building. It is at the intersection of a, an interstate and a major artery, a major road. Um, it is loud. Um, it is an urban church. And um, real estate wise, it's probably not in the best spot you could pick to put a church. Um, this is a location that two times a week, uh, they would open their doors and they would serve the homeless in the community of Asheville. So twice a week, they would serve up to 300 people. And as Rodman has said, one of the things that first really touched for me was that we went in and we set up tablecloths on tables. We put silverware and linens. They decorated the tables with flowers, beautiful vases. What they were, and they would not allow you to come through into a food line where you got your food. The homeless sat down at a table together and they were treated with dignity. And they were treated like human beings. And to me, that was before I even interacted with them. So jumping to the following day, I went back to that church. Um, I got to watch these students playing cornhole with the homeless residents, the mentally ill, those that are strung out on drugs, smiling, laughing with these kids. Who else does that with them? Ever. Okay? These are the moments, these are the things you see, and you see God at work in those moments. Um, they had a beautiful garden behind the church where they grew food for any of the homeless that wanted to come and pick, pick the vegetables and, and have food to eat. Um, you know, the, the homeless that were coming, they're, they're, um, they're obviously unemployed. Um, they're addicts. Um, they're mentally ill. They're people that are down on their luck. And I sat in this garden for a period of time before we went to have lunch with them. And uh, I watched. I watched as all the addicts sat at picnic tables in the shade. They disappear around a corner and shoot up. Come right back. It really hit me that they can't control this. This is beyond them. And this is a situation that they're in. So, in all, in all honesty, I was a little scared to eat lunch with everybody. I'm going to be at a table with eight to ten other people eating side by side. It's one thing to see them on the street. It's one thing to see a documentary and go, I get it. It's pretty rough. It's sad. When it comes time to sit down and break bread, with another community that you're not as familiar with, it's scary. It turned out to be the best lunch I've ever had in my life, the best food I've ever had, the most nourishing meal I've ever had. Um, gentleman sitting beside me, his name was Tim. Tim was late 50s, 59, looked like he was 70, um, looked like he could have been my grandfather. Uh, I asked him, you know, we chatted for a little bit, and Tim said, I am just so grateful to wake up every single day. Praise the Lord, I am so thankful for all I have. He's homeless. He's thankful. 
Talked to him later after lunch. Tim told me a story. Tim worked hard all his life. He was a construction worker. His, uh, his, his wife died of a drug overdose. She got hooked on pills. Six days later, they found her. He and his daughter found her. His daughter said, I want to live in the house, Dad. I, I want to live here. Within the year, the daughter died of pills. Overdose. Within another two years, both his mother and father died. Tim went back to pills, went to alcohol. He's been on the street for five years now. And the man said to me, I still have hope. I'm going to get out of this. God believes in me and loves me. This is who we were eating with. This is who these students were interacting with. Um, and finally, um, so we interact with a lot of these folks. We learned their stories. And then we'd run around the town of Asheville in the afternoons. We let the kids free. The adults would go out. And we'd walk the city streets. And you know what? Those people that we see on the streets that are homeless, they don't look like what you think they look like. They look like your grandparents. They look like your parents. They look like your children. 18-year-olds strung out, thin as can be. That can be your kid. That can be your grandkid. They look like we look. Their circumstances are different. Um, but to see them in the cities, you would say, hey, there's so-and-so. You know, as Ryan or someone else said, there's a guy, hey, Chris, how are you, Chris? You knew his name. And we saw those people throughout the day, and all of a sudden, they weren't homeless to us anymore. They weren't something else in the community to be looked at. They were truly our brothers and sisters that we felt a connection with. Um, I don't have the answers. I don't have a solution. All I can say is this was my story of what I saw when I went to Asheville. These people, they want to be treated with dignity. They're not asking for much. They want to be seen. Smile at them on the streets. That's what they've said. Just say hi to us. Smile. Acknowledge we are here. And um, they have hope. They all have hope. And, and finally, um, they need to know that they're loved. And all that means is saying, good morning, smile, hi, I love you, God loves you. And while we were singing this morning, uh, I'll just finish with this. The sequence hymn was, Here I Am, Lord. And the line says, I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. They are our people. Just as much as this church, we're all family. They are our family as well. So let's not forget them. Thank you. We want to thank all of you for sharing. Um, you know, my, the church I served in downtown D.C. for 21 years was uh, very much like that. And uh, it goes back to what Jesus talks about. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. It's about relationships that are grounded in our faith in Jesus Christ. It does change our lives. It changes our hearts. It's something for us to think about and pray about.